Russia's oil industry workers are resigning en masse due to Ukraine's increasing drone attacks. Russian workers are quitting their jobs at oil refineries en masse over safety fears amid a spate of Ukrainian drone attacks targeting President Vladimir Putin's energy infrastructure, according to a report. Newsweek says that a former employee at the Kubyshev refinery, which is one of the largest oil industry enterprises in the Samara region and owned by Rosneft, the country's largest oil producer, said he and many others resigned after the facility was attacked by Ukrainian drones in late March. The Kubyshev refinery halted all production after it sustained damage in the attack, Reuters reported at the time, noting that around 14% of Russia's refining capacity had been shut down by drone attacks. Ukraine has been attacking Russian energy infrastructure facilities to target Putin's oil industry, the cornerstone of his country's economy. Moscow depends on its oil exports and energy industry, which makes up some 30% of the country's budget revenues and are crucial for the funding of the war in Ukraine. The former employee told Russian news outlet VotTak that at least seven chemical analysis laboratory technicians quit after the attack. The publication said it found that in April the refinery posted about 50 advertisements, mostly for engineers or technical support crew, in a bid to draw in new employees. VotTak found that employees have also quit in large numbers at the Slavyansk oil refinery in Russia's Krasnodar region, which was damaged in a Ukrainian drone attack late last month, forcing authorities to suspend some operations. People all over the plant have also left. It's not safe to work there now, a current employee of the Slavyansk oil refinery told the news outlet. Vottak found a large number of adverts for jobs at the plant in April. Of the more than 120 new vacancies, half were related to technical support. Kiev has increased its attacks on Russian refineries this year, hampering gasoline production. Russia moved to a new concept of war. Experts pointed out the nuance in attacks on Ukraine. The Russian occupiers switched to classical, modern, network-centric, non-contact warfare. This opinion was expressed by aviation expert, leading researcher of the State Aviation Museum of Ukraine, Valery Romanenko. The war is on the front line, but the main task is to destroy the infrastructure of the control system, industry and the transport system of another state. The one who implements this first wins the war. The Russians are now trying to put this concept into practice. They are using the means intended for this, long-range missiles, both ballistic and aero-ballistic, cruise missiles, drones, he said on the Espresso TV channel. The expert noted that the Russian Federation struck not only power plants, thermal and hydroelectric power plants, the occupiers also struck Stri in the Lviv region next to which gas storage facilities are located, that is the gas transportation system or our gas reserves are already under attack, says Romanenko. He added that the Russian invaders cannot do anything to the Ukrainian armed forces and therefore want to take it out on the civilian population. Before, the Russians did not shoot at the gas transportation system because its allies in Europe, in particular in Hungary and Slovakia, receive gas through Ukraine. At least they did, I don't know how it is now. The Russians now want to take it out on the civilian population. The only thing is that they forgot that our rear is Europe and the United States, summed up Valery Romanenko. Recently, the head of Ukraine's national energy company has called on EU countries to help protect its natural gas storage facilities from a recent spate of Russian attacks so they can keep contributing to lower prices across the continent. Oleksiy Chernyshov, chief executive of state-run Naftogaz, said it is of interest of the EU to protect storage, transportation and production facilities given that Ukraine's gas infrastructure is well integrated into Europe's energy system. Naftogaz said gas storage sites in western Ukraine had come under attack several times in recent months but only above-ground facilities had been damaged. Underground storage tanks, which may be as deep as three kilometers beneath the surface, had remained unaffected, it said. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk acknowledged the presence of NATO troops in Ukraine. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk acknowledged the presence of NATO soldiers in Ukraine. He told reporters about this after the CIMAS meeting. Tusk answered in the affirmative to the question about the presence of NATO troops in Ukraine. 
but at the same time clarified that there were supposedly not many of them there. According to him, without the help of the Alliance, Kiev would have lost the war long ago, which is why a certain number of Western soldiers are present in Ukraine. However, the Prime Minister did not answer which countries exactly. NATO today helps as much as possible. Without NATO's help, Ukraine would not have been able to defend itself for so long. Well, there are some troops there, that is, soldiers. There are few soldiers there, observers, engineers. Tusk said, adding that direct NATO intervention in the conflict with Russia must be avoided. It is worth noting that in the West, there is active discussion about sending Alliance troops to Ukraine, for now, as a training mission, and then see how it goes. This proposal does not have many supporters, but there are some, even despite the danger of a local conflict escalating into a global one. Earlier, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg argued that the bloc would not deploy forces to Ukraine since Kiev had not asked for it. NATO has no intention of deploying forces to Ukraine. When I visited Ukraine last week, the Ukrainians did not ask for NATO troops in Ukraine. What they asked for is more support, Stoltenberg told reporters while on a trip to Italy. French President Emmanuel Macron has brought up the notion of a NATO intervention in Ukraine on several occasions, insisting that it should not be ruled out as part of strategic ambiguity. He has suggested that Western soldiers could be dispatched if the Russians were to break through the front lines and if the Ukrainian government requested it. Russia has repeatedly warned the US and its allies that they risk direct confrontation by providing weapons, ammunition, and money to Ukraine. The West has propped up Kiev with more than $200 billion worth of aid while insisting that this does not make them participants in the conflict.